Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to Hermiston Nazarene Church online. We are trying a new format. We hope you enjoy it. We invite you to worship with us this morning. Some 
Join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just love you so much. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together as a body of Christ all over this world together as we're online just to give glory to you. And Lord, we just have some prayers on our hearts and I know that there are many prayers out there that people have not, um, have, haven't sent to us, but we know they're there. People are struggling, Lord. People are having financial difficulties. They're having health issues. And Lord, we just ask that, that you just remember these people. Just embrace them and give them peace, Lord. And Lord, we want to lift up uh, the Ridgefield Nazarene Church, Lord. We lift up the, the families of the pastor that passed away and the student that is now in your arms. And Lord, we just ask prayers for the family, for peace and understanding and comfort during this time. And for those students that were there and, and were part of this, this horrible tragedy, Lord, that you help them to see what you want them to see, Lord. That you will continue to work in their lives through this tragedy. And Lord, we lift up the people that um, are in Beirut, Lord, because of that explosion. Uh, we've heard that there are over 300,000 people now homeless, Lord, and, and hundreds lost their lives and Lord, we just want you to be with them and give them comfort, Lord. Let the needs be met for your will and your glory. Lord, help these people to turn to you for comfort and for understanding during this horrible, horrible time. And Lord, because you are such a gracious and loving and merciful God, we also have some great praise, re praise reports for you as to present to the people of our church. And Lord, we lift up the fact that, that Emily and Bobby Adams, they had their baby girl, Hadley, which was born Friday. What a wonderful, joyous occasion that we have a new life to celebrate. And Lord, we lift up Jerry Carlson, who turned 68 on Friday. And we have such a, an update to glorify you with because he's off the ventilator. He has no fever after being having a fever for a month and a half. He is fever free. And Lord, we thank you for that healing. And we thank you for that family being faithful. And we thank you, Lord, that we have a, a body of believers that come together and pray for each other. And Lord, we lift those people up right now. And we just thank you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you also for our offering, that we have an opportunity to worship you with our tithes and offering, Lord. And we just ask that you be with that today. Lord, just help it to increase the needs and, and bless the giver, bless the gift, and bless those who are unable to give right now. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.
set free. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ, my all in all. Joy of my
Hey, good morning, Hermnaz Church family. So glad that you're with us today uh, in the house of the Lord. And isn't it cool that your house is the house of the Lord this morning? Uh, that car you're in, that living room, wherever you are, maybe you're outside at the picnic table. Um, hey, we're just glad that you're worshiping with us today and uh, we're glad you're part of us. Uh, lots of things happen in the life of the church and I wanna tell you a few things that are going on before we really get started today. Uh, in the message, and that is if you have not gotten the word yet about the passing of one of our saints, of Hal Eccles, uh, this last Tuesday evening, Hal went to be with his Lord and Savior. He went and crawled in the arms of Jesus and uh, is rejoicing, and, hell, and, uh, and heaven is celebrating um, today uh, with Hal. So if you would, pray for Jeannie. Uh, keep her covered in your prayers, and uh, keep the family covered in your prayers, if you would. Um, there's no information as far as services or times or anything like that, um, but we'll keep you posted as soon as we know something. But, uh, but pray for the Eccles family, uh, if you would. And then I am so excited to uh, be able to bring to you um, a little shift in ministry. Um, those of you that have journeyed with us as Hermnaz know that uh, we've had three different uh, refresh and pause moments online. Now the refresh and pause, uh, if you remember, it's worship, word, prayer and communion and uh, it's a 30 minute deal and uh, we've done it online well we're not doing it online anymore 
uh, at least this time. We're going to do it in person, uh, and it's going to be this Thursday night at 6 and 7 o'clock. So there's two times for you to get in on it. Uh, we're going to ask that you register, and the information is here on, uh, on the website here below. Uh, they'll have a link for you. Um, but if you register for that, we want to stay to 25 because that's what the mandate is. And we're going to be outside. So all you need to do is register and bring a chair. We'll have everything else for you. Um, but it'll be time, a uh, great time for us as a church to get together and uh, have communion, spend some time in prayer. Again, 30 minutes, you stop in, do it, go, and uh, we'll just have a good time. So uh, follow the link and, uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll get there. So, um, and then in the life of the church, oh, man, we had such a great time uh, the other night, uh, Thursday night, we met, the group of us that met here at Victory Square Park, and we baptized uh, Emily Mellick. Um, I asked Emily what it was that uh, she'd want to do for her baptism, and she said, I want to go to the river. Well, she couldn't go to the river um, with uh, the way things were working out. Um, so I said, Melody, uh, Emily, what, what do you want? Do you want to uh, be sprinkled? Do you want to have uh, a little drip? Do you want a cup poured on you? Do you want a bucket? What do you want? And she said, oh, pastor, I want, I want the bucket. Just bring me the bucket. So we met here on Thursday night at the park, and we baptized Emily uh, with a bucket of water, and it was awesome. So we got video for you. So celebrate with Emily today, will you, as you check out her baptism story in this video. Here in the park, just ready to say, you know what? Uh, we, got, we got a believer that's saying, I want the world to know my love for Jesus. Emily, I gotta ask you, you love Jesus? Yes, I do. Jesus living in the heart? Yes. Then I got some scripture for you. Paul says this in Acts uh, 22 6. It is our joy and privilege to celebrate with you the awesome testimony of your life when you gave your life to the Lord, forgiveness of your sins, telling the people that you're surrounding you with love today, that you're living for Jesus with your whole heart, with your whole life, and you want Him. We want to baptize you tonight, this night of August, here in this park. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptizing you so you can share in his death, but also share in his resurrection. You ready? Here it comes. transforming this life. In your name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 My name's Krista, and I'm going to read Colossians 3 to you. Living the New Life. Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. But now, the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on the new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. 
in this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, un or barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters. And he lives within all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Make allowances for each other or make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Instructions for the Christian Households Wives, submit to your husbands as, as is fitting for those who belong to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not aggravate your children, or they will become discouraged. Servants, obey your earthly masters in everything you do. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. Serve them sincerely because of your reverent fear of the Lord. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving in Christ. But if you do what is wrong, you'll be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites. Wow. Krista Fisher, thank you so much for bringing Colossians chapter 3 to life for us today. Appreciate you reading the word. Um, you know, we're in this book of Colossians, and uh, each week we've read the entire chapter. And as you know, we're not going to preach the entire chapter today, so uh, uh, Krista read the entire chapter uh, for us today. There is so much in that chapter, uh, but we want to pick out some things uh, today out of Colossians chapter 3. But let's just get started reviewing what happened in Colossians chapter 1. Remember, Paul here is um, impacting the church with a letter because the church is, is being infiltrated with fear and frustration and all the goings on about life. And uh, life was hard, life was anxious, life was just filled with all kinds of, uh, of turmoil. And the church, the baby church, was getting pulled in and sucked into that. So Paul writes this letter uh, to the church there in Colossae. It says, hey, listen, don't let it influence you the way that, uh, the way that it is. And then in chapter 2, which we covered last week, is the whole, that chapter is the whole reason he wrote the book of Colossians. Um, Colossians, if you remember, we talked last week about there's this current in life. And uh, some of the currents in life, the whole idea of a current is it pulls us away from a direction and from the place that we're supposed to be, of where we're intended to be. And uh, man, so many of people last week uh, really caught on to, hey, you know what, I've kind of drifted. Um, I had Jesus at 15, and now I've lived my life, and I've drifted from where uh, I want uh, to be and where Jesus wants me to be. And, um, and so Paul writes all of that and says, listen, you got to stop the drift. Uh, you got to keep your eyes focused on Jesus and uh, what he has for you. Well, today in Colossians chapter 3, this is kind of a hard one because this is where like the rubber meets the road. This is where life gets a, a little sticky, uh, so to speak. Um, because Paul is talking to the church here and saying, listen, um, 
this is how we're supposed to live, and these are the things that we're supposed to hang on to. We're supposed to grab a hold, hang on to them, and, and live our lives, because how we live our lives, by the things that we grab a hold of, and the things that we hang on to, it is going to impact our eternal life. So um, we want to dive into, into that this morning. Pray with me, will you, this morning? Father, today, as we come and we break open your word today, uh, this book of Colossians, in chapter 3, we listen to what Paul has to say to the church. Father, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts today, right where we're sitting, right in whatever room we're in. Father, come and move in. We give you permission. Have your way with us. We pray this in your name. And everyone said, I know you said it. So there you go. Hey, I want to pick up on, on verses 12 through 15. So if you still have it open or have it on, you can follow along with this. But, but just these verses, 12 through 15 of chapter 3, uh, let me read those to you again. This is a highlight. It says, Since God chose you to be the holy people He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderness, with mercy, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, and uh, patience. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive one another who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must also forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always, I love how he ends this, always be thankful. Man, it's hard to be thankful sometimes. Um, as humans, when I read that, as humans, I'm reminded that we are just curious creatures. Uh, we are so curious. Um, and it goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. You can see how curious we are. Curiosity is what got us kicked out of the garden back in Genesis. We're curious, but is that fruit really something we shouldn't eat? Did he really say what he said? And, and so we're, we're curious. I mean, we're so curious. We walk in to, I don't know, well, we don't walk into coffee places anymore, but, but you know, you walk in, you go, man, what are you drinking? I mean, that was one of those questions I always hear at wherever I was having coffee. Hey, what, what is that drink you got? You know, we're curious. We want to know, hey, what are you eating? What do they have over there at that restaurant, uh, in that table? What are they, what, what are they eating there? Uh, hey, what is that you're wearing? What, what, what suit is that? What, what, what dress is that? Who made those shoes? Right? What jewelry are you wearing? I mean, what, what do you have on? <laughs> I love that because we are, we are curious. And here we are in Colossians chapter 3, and Paul says right in the middle of everything that he's saying, he throws in verse 11, which I didn't, I didn't highlight for you. But in verse 11, he reminds us that we are supposed to be a few things. He, he said, hey, listen, let me remind you in verse 11 that uh, we are supposed to be um, <laughs> uh, about Jesus and about Christ being the center. And he says, so what are you about? I mean, Paul's looking, looking at the church and goes, hey, what are you about? What are you... What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you walking? You know, are you, are you walking what you're talking? And, uh, and he's saying, hey, listen, um, how you live your life impacts your faith, and your faith impacts your eternal reward. So three questions today. So journal takers, get ready. Three questions uh, out of these verses here. And uh, the first one is this. Uh, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Now, I don't mean what you're wearing right now because some of you are probably still in bed. Um, you know, I mean, everybody thinks that people online for online church, that you're like standing in your living room and you're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, no, we know. You're laying in bed. Uh, you're just crashed out on the couch. I mean, there's other things going on around you. Well, I, I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about here is, is what are you wearing um, in, in your life? Um, verse 12 says this, since God chose you, Okay? He chose us to be his holy people whom he loves. And then he says, you must clothe yourselves. <laughs> okay? In other words, he's saying, you can't just go run around the way you want to. you got to clothe yourselves. And the word must here, it, it's kind of a command. It's not a suggestion. Uh, must here is translated um, as, a, as, a, as a mandate. Um, it's an expectation. Um, it's, a, it's a place where God comes along and says, listen, you must clothe yourselves. And then he gives you the list. Here you go. He gives you the answer. Uh, he, he says, with tenderness, mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Man, what a list. And, and he, says, he says, not just like on Sundays. You know, don't clothe yourself like that just on Sundays when you want to. But he says, every time we see each other, we have got to make sure that we're clothing ourselves 
with this list. Every time, day or night, tomorrow, next week, next month, um, clothe yourself. You must do that. Um, and you say, well, man, I think my relationship with God is okay. But if you're asking the question today to yourself, I just don't think that I'm as close to God as I, I really could be. Um, maybe it's the consistency of what you wear, uh, uh, what you put on in, in your heart and in your life and in your mind. Um, inconsistency is a killer in the relationship uh, that we have with somebody, especially a relationship with God. Consistency um, builds character and builds relationship with God. So maybe today, if you're saying, man, I just don't know why I'm not growing in my spiritual walk, let me ask you, how consistent are you in your walk with the Lord? What's your consistency like? What are you putting on? Um, why is this so important here? Um, so I'm looking through that. I'm thinking, okay, Paul, why is this so important to you that we, we are careful of what we put on? Besides the idea of, you know, we must do this. He's writing to the church here. And remember, the church is filled with frustration. It's filled with hate. It's filled with division and insecurities. It, it, I mean, it, people are just full of selfishness. And Paul's saying, that's why it's so important. And people might look at you, uh, I know they look at me sometimes. Um, I've, I've had conversations with people that say, man, how, how can you live the way you live? How can you stand up underneath what that person did to you and how they mistreated you? Where do you get that kind of faith from? What about that peace that's in your life? How do you live like that? Where do you draw that from? Well, my question to you is, is what are you wearing? Because here, you must, have, you must be tender-hearted. <laughs> tender-hearted. Wow. Okay. How many of you are, like, not tender-hearted, right? I mean, you are the one that believes that if you do something, there's a strict consequence for it. And if there's not a consequence that's strong enough, you're like, let's add to the consequence, <laughs> right? You're not very tender in your heart and spirit. Especially when it comes to somebody who doesn't believe like you, who doesn't think like you. Um, who, who doesn't walk like you do, who has different viewpoints than you, it's hard sometimes to be tender-hearted toward that person. Look at our culture. We're not very tender toward anybody anymore. But Paul says you must be tender-hearted. Maybe today you're not tender-hearted and God's slapping you right now going, uh, hello, you need to be tender-hearted. Maybe kindness. Maybe kindness is one of those things in this list where you're like, I'm a kind of a kind person to people that I like. Um, I'm a kind person to um, the, the poor and the elderly. Not so much to the rich and the famous. Listen, Scripture says here, kind to everybody. And maybe today you're finding out, like, yeah, I kind of need to be kind to that person. Because you already have somebody in your mind going, like, yep, not tender, and I haven't been very kind. Maybe that's where you need to work uh, this week. Oh, and then the thing of humility. <laughs> you know, it's just downright hard, isn't it, to be humble about things. Especially in those moments where you think you've been right. <laughs> You've been right, you've been right, you've been right, you've been right, you've been right. No, I wasn't. I have been wrong. Um, humility is one of those things where at least I have to go back and, and learn uh, constantly. It's like, yeah, okay, I thought I was going the right way, but yeah, I'm really not. Maybe for you it's, it's humility. And this gentleness, gentleness is different than tenderness. I can be tender, but man, I can be a steamroller. I mean, just my personality, um, and I know some of you are just like me. Um, but this gentleness idea, gentleness does not mean here love everybody all equally. It means love, right? But gentle does not mean give up on your standard of living of holiness. And that's what our culture is just like their culture here in Paul's day is saying, listen, stop being uh, so hard about things. Just be gentle to everybody. Well, gentleness is not coexistence. Gentleness is not having um, a blind eye to the wrong. Scripture's full of saying, no, listen, love one another, be tenderhearted, be kind, be humble, be gentle, but it's meaning here, be gentle in your spirit, which that's a whole different sermon, but being gentle in that. And be patient with, and have patience with people's reactions. Have, be patient with somebody who doesn't know Christ. Be patient with somebody who's not involved in church. Uh, who doesn't believe like you. So Paul here, in this one verse, he gives us a whole list of how to clothe ourselves. And, and I mean, we'd stop right there, right? Because my question is, what are you wearing? Are you wearing any of this? What part of this are you not wearing? Because um, it's a whole list. It doesn't say, 
tenderness or kindness or humility or greatness or greatness or patience. It's a whole package. Um, so how you doing on the package? I know I've got work to do um, and maybe you do as well. Second question journalers is this. What are you holding on to? What are you grasping? Verse 13 kind of gives us the answer to, uh, there to think about some things. It says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive everyone who offends you. <laughs> All right, make allowance. Um, Making allowance, it sounds good in the word and sounds maybe kind of easy, but man, it takes work. It takes effort. It takes energy. It takes personality. It takes true hard character sometimes to go and say, okay, you've done me wrong. I'm going to make an allowance for it because I know I'm supposed to do that. I want to be clothed with that list and okay, I'm going to make an allowance. That's not, hard. That's not easy to do. It takes work. It doesn't just happen. And the reason why it doesn't just happen is because it's really personal, Paul's saying, because it's all about other people's faults, right? And forgiving the one who offends you. <laughs> Let's just let that marinate there for a little while. <laughs> I mean, really? I have to forgive everyone who's faulted me? I have to forgive those who have done me wrong? That's what Scripture's saying. Um, what are you holding on to? Maybe today you're holding on to that person that's offended you. <laughs> Maybe today you're holding on to whatever that fault was that they, they did to you. And right in the middle of that, Paul says this. Don't you just love this? Paul says, and remember, okay, remember, after you've made the allowance for their faults and their offenses toward you, remember that the Lord forgave you. <laughs> Don't you just love that? I mean, Paul... <laughs> that's kind of petty, Paul. That's one of those things, Paul, where you don't need to remind me about. I mean, I, don't you just get frustrated sometimes when somebody comes at you and goes, yeah, well, what would Jesus do? Jesus would forgive. Jesus did forgive. Well, Paul here, I mean, right when you want to be right in the middle of your own just frustration and anger, you know, Paul's like, no, 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 no. Remember, God forgave you. I mean, maybe you're one that said, I am so angry at that person. I am never going to talk to them again. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm really going to get them. I'm going to defriend them in all my social media. <laughs> well, what does that just teach us a lesson, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, until the response comes back and goes, okay. Paul says, hmm. Well, what if Jesus never talked to you again? And what if Jesus defriended you? Oh, Paul, seriously. You just want to sometimes look at Paul and go, man, just stop flapping your lips, Paul. <laughs> because I just want to soak in my own little bitterness for a little while. I mean, after all, Paul, did I ask for your opinion? No. And now you're tuning in today to hear this message. You're like, well, pastor, did I ask for your opinion? Well, no, and that's why it's not my opinion. I'm just trying to do the job and tell you what the Word of God says, because the Word of God says you must, the very last line there, you must forgive others. <laughs> Ouch. What are you holding on to? Are you holding on to some unforgiveness in your heart? Are you holding on to a grudge? Are you holding on to a, a, an offense that was against you? Um, there's a time in my life in ministry when uh, I kind of hit this wall here. Um, and it was focused around recognition. We all like to be recognized for things, uh, especially our accomplishments, right? Um, but there's a time when I wasn't being recognized, I didn't think, for my talent. Uh, I wasn't being recognized for the hard work, uh, my, my, my vision, my creativity. Um, and we were starting to implement some new things in ministry. We we're making some big paradigm shifts and changing things up. And, and uh, man, the senior pastor was just being praised left and right, or on camera, right and left, however it goes backwards. And, 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 and we just being like, like praise. I'm sitting there in the, in, the, uh, in the congregation every week going like, man, that was my idea. Man, that was my idea. You know, I put 72 hours in this week on that idea. I mean, I, 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 had, I had an issue. I had a problem. And then one day, as I was looking at this message, I remember the one day I was sitting in the spot where the Lord and I, we would just meet. We met there a lot. And we'd talk and we'd pray and I, I'd hear him out and he'd hear me out. And uh, the Holy Spirit came alongside me that day and, and he said, uh, Hey, Eric, uh, what are you holding on to? And I'm like, what are you holding on to? And, he, and he, he said, hey, I've listened to you whine, and I've listened to your, your frustration for months. And I'm like, months? No, nah, okay, honestly, I wish I could say it was just like a couple hours. <laughs> I wish I could say even, it was maybe just even a couple days, 
or weeks. But honestly, if I'm honest with you today, man, it was, it was a couple months, maybe three months. And the Holy Spirit comes alongside me and says, listen, you've got to get off your spot and remove the offense that people have had against you. And, and you need to humble yourself. You need to put on this list. You need to clothe yourself in these ways. And the Holy Spirit, when I says, because he, he says, because I can't give you something else for you to do as long as your hands are full of the offense and the grudge and the bitterness and the anger. It's stifling you. It's putting you in a box and making you unusable. And I left that time with the Lord that day and left that time with the Holy Spirit that day and I was like, wow, I guess I got to go get a whole new wardrobe. And man, we had a great, a great time there. Um, you see, because these questions are meant to calibrate what is going on inside of us, not to condemn us, but make it all come together, make it all work together. Because I'll tell you what, it's easy to look at other people, isn't it? I mean, you look in the room you're at right now, I mean, just glance across the room, just boom, right? It's easy to look at somebody else. But today's message in chapter 3 of Colossians, Paul's saying to the church of Colossae, he's saying it's not about looking at other people today, it's all about self-examination today. What are you wearing? Are you clothed in such the way that God says clothe yourselves? What are you hanging on to? What falses or offenses or the need of forgiveness are you hanging on to? Here's the third thing, last thing today. What is taking up occupancy in your heart? What is taking up occupancy in your heart? <laughs> wow, well, that doesn't sound like a very hard question. Try answering it. I mean, just honestly. What's moved in? What's taken residency in your heart? Verse 15 kind of gives us the answer again. He says, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Hmm. Do you have the peace this morning that only comes from Christ? We try to find peace all over the place, especially now, right? I mean, every day it seems like we're, we're, we're looking at people that are just grasping for peace. We're grasping for comfort. We're grasping for that. But Paul's reminding the church here, listen, stop looking at all of that and grasp the peace that only comes in Christ. And it's that peace that rules your heart. So I want to ask you, do you have that peace? Because you are formed as one body, you are called to live in this peace. He doesn't say, hey, because you're in one body, because you're part of the church, or because you have Christian friends or Christian parents or a Christian heritage, listen, you've been called holy people, you've been chosen by God, and now because you're one body in Christ, you are called, right? Um, it, it's saying called here is, is invited. Um, it's, it, it's an invitation. But called here also means uh, the expectation is you will do this. <laughs> um, this is not a request. This is a here you go. Here's your new mandate from Christ. You are called to live in the peace of Christ. Hmm. What's ruling your heart today? Is there peace there? Is there frustration there? Is there anger there? Listen, God allows these thoughts and these emotions to come and nail us in the heart, right? And come in our mind. And that's okay. Because honestly, that helps us think about how it is we're to adjust our lives and to come into the umbrella and under the umbrella of Christ. But we cannot let it reside there. These things can come and visit, but man, they can't take up occupancy. I had somebody in one church, uh, man, they just, uh, if I even think about it too long in the wrong way, man, my blood pressure just goes, boom, spikes right up there. Man, because they, 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 they did me wrong. You ever have anybody just do you wrong and then lie about it and then continue the lie? They just did me wrong. And I don't mean they just did me wrong um, and, 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 and left. I mean, that anger, man, it moved in. I don't mean it just moved into like, like, like one room of my heart. It moved into the whole house. I mean, I wish I could say that wasn't the case, but man, it moved in. Um, it not only moved in, it moved into to every room. I mean, in every room of my life, there was a bag um, that this person dropped off, and I'm carrying this baggage in every room of my heart. 
and they just sat back on my couch and they crossed their legs and they chewed down, you know, so, so, some fruit and some vegetables and some desserts and then they break open the coffee and the iced coffee and the extra hot coffee and they just sit there and smile at me. <laughs> Did I have an issue? <laughs> I think I had an issue. Um, I'll say I had an issue. <laughs> but that day when I sat there with the Holy Spirit and sat there with the Lord and we had this conversation, he said, it's time to kick this anger in the tail and out of the door, out of your house, out of your presence. Verse 23 of this chapter goes on and, and Paul says, work willingly at whatever you do, okay? Willingly means uh, you, you wanna do this. And sometimes, honestly, we don't wanna work for the Lord, but he's saying, no, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. What I learned in my life several times is I work for people. I work for their praise. I work for them to uh, be happy. I'm a people pleaser most of the time. I'm, I, <laughs> most of the time, I, 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 I'm, I'm after you know, recognition. That's one of maybe my downfalls. But Paul says, no, work willingly for the Lord, not for people, not for my boss, not for my family, but for the Lord. Verse 22 goes on and Paul says once again, okay, Remember, remember, remember what you're doing here. Remember that the Lord will give you this inheritance that he said and your reward, uh, it's gonna be big because it's the master that you are serving and that master is Christ. So I guess church today uh, here in August, um, as we get ready to go into, man, don't you just love the cool temperatures? It's kind of cooled down a little bit. I'm ready for fall, right? I'm ready to get the campfire started. I'm ready for um, whatever happens with school to get school going and, and kind of bring some something, you know, maybe some normality uh, to what we're, we're about. But what master are you really focused on today? What master are you serving? Is it self or is it Christ? What Paul is saying here is what are you wearing? What are you holding on to? and what is occupying the places of your heart. Here's the good news. Whatever you're holding on to, whatever you're wearing, whatever's occupying your heart, listen, if you're not a Christian today, you can be because what Christ did on the cross for you, he loved you so much. We read it this morning. He loved you so much and he calls you to be one of his holy people. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I am so sorry for the things that I've done in my life. Will you forgive me my sins? Come into my heart and you will, you will experience a whole new life at a whole new level. And you'll be clothed correctly. You'll be hanging on to the, to, to the right things of Christ. And your master is no longer self and, and people, it becomes Christ. But maybe today you're part of the church and maybe you've been a saint for however long. Maybe you're a Christian for 10 years, 20 years. Maybe you're a brand new Christian. And you're realizing that, hey, you know what? I've kind of drifted that we talked about last week. And, and, and I, I'm maybe not clothed in a total package. In other words, I might have some nudity going on somewhere. I shouldn't be having some nudity. Can you say that? I can say that. I'm not in a physical church, right? <laughs> but you're not clothed correctly, right? There's something missing. You need to, you need to put it on. And maybe today you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on to that, that past, that history. I don't know. It's occupied my heart. It's moved in. The anger, the bitterness, the frustration, the fault, it, it's all there. And I've never dealt with it except I just keep it alive. <laughs> and maybe today, church, you're looking at Paul's letter and you're going, yep, yep, mm -hmm. Because what Christ did on the cross for the church, he came, he gave his life for the church, and he says, I'm going to come back again for the church. And when I come back again for the church, I'm going to gather the church up, and, and we're going to go and we're going to spend eternity in a heavenly party forever and ever and ever and ever infinity. I mean, that's what I want. And that's the kind of church I want to be part of. That's the kind of church I want my, 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 my heart to, to lead and my heart to follow, my heart to journey with people that are like-minded because we're one body. And we're like-minded because of what Christ did on the cross. We believe it, we live it, we, we, we chew on it. But I have to ask you this morning, we have one more chapter in Colossians. It's the fourth chapter. And I'm excited for next week uh, already because Paul closes his letter in a very cool way. It's a very cool challenge and there's some very cool promises in chapter four. But before we get there, we have to answer these questions. What are we wearing? What do we hold on to? What's occupying us? 
So church, today, I pray, and I'm praying for you, that you will answer those questions. And maybe even talk about it here right as soon as we close. Um, and you'll know, hey, listen, things are happening. And um, I, need to do some, I need to do some business with the Lord. So a couple weeks ago, 13 people said, I'm doing business with the Lord. I've talked to many of you. And man, it, it's, it's great what God's doing, right? So maybe that can be you today. God loves you. God's got a plan for you. And uh, man, he wants you to answer these questions from your heart. So pray with me today. Father, today, as we wrap this service up, Lord, it's all about you. And we give you all the glory because you are our master. Christ, our Savior, the risen King, the Lord of all lords, the God of all gods, the healer, the redeemer, the sanctifier, our friend. So Father, today, I pray that you'd go with these hearts wherever we are today and you would help us be truthful and honest and authentic in our answering these questions. Father, I pray that those conversations that happen today are, are, are healing conversations. I pray that these, some of these conversations will be challenging conversations to move us off our spot, to go deeper with you so we can enjoy that, that heavenly reward that Paul talks about here to the church in Colossae. Keep it in front of us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Church, I love you. Um, we are uh, going to be back here next week, uh, same time, 1030, uh, unless something changes. But uh, watch online. Hopefully we'll see some of you at Refresh and Pause this Thursday night, either at 6 or 7. Don't forget to register. Have a great, great lunch. Love you. Thank you.